Hi, Barbara. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. So lovely to speak to you. How are you doing? You as well. Thank you. Um, maybe you can just kick off with a brief introduction to this uh, brilliant, brilliant film, Jacob's, Jacob's Wife. How can you describe a bit about what people can expect if they see the film? Jacob's Wife is the story of um, the awakening of a woman to herself. And it's also a story about marriage and how do you keep it going after so many years when one person feels a little bit marginalized and it's told through the metaphor of being bitten by a vampire and having new blood coursing through your veins and prompting you to think and feel and act differently. And you've got something of a reputation as a scream queen. You've got, you know, quite the career in, in horror movies. So what is it about this kind of genre that really appeals to you? I think um, the horror genre deals in depth with one of the more basic human emotions and that's fear. And uh, we all share that. We all have empathy for that. And um, the horror genre more than any other genre allows you to face those fears and potentially see yourself in a, in a character's um, story and hopefully overcoming those fears and being victorious. And what about this particular script and this particular character? I mean, it looks like it was actually a lot of fun to play her because you kind of have this transformation from, I think she's referred to as, you know, church mouse into this completely the opposite, you know, very liberated, very bold, very out there kind of character. So, you know, what was it about her that really attracted you and, and being involved with this film? Well, I developed the film and I found the script. Um, it was actually sent to me by the original writer, Mark Steensland. It had won a screenplay contest at Shriek Fest in Los Angeles. I think it was in 2015. And I read it and I thought that it was a good project for me as an actor. And that's uh, the way it was sent to me, that this would potentially be a nice project that I could maybe produce and, and also act in. And um, I think things are getting better for women over the last few years, markedly so. But a number of years ago, there weren't as many great roles for, for women um, in a lot of movies, um, maybe not, maybe more so in the horror genre than other genres, because I do feel like the horror genre has been very good to women. But I read the script and I thought, wow, this is, this is real, this movie really speaks to me. This character really speaks to me. And, you know, it, it's sort of about this, the second wave of a woman's life. And I, I felt like it sort of mirrored my own life and career because I have had a pretty good career in my early days. And then when I got married and had kids, really, really wasn't because of that, but it was just because of a certain age that I reached 30, 35 to 38 or so. I wasn't really getting many jobs at all, many auditions, many opportunities. And I thought, well, is that it? Is that it for me? And then I, I did get married and have my children and really focused on them. And, and a number of years later came back with a, with, a, with a part that was offered to me out of the blue in the movie, You're Next. And when I did that movie, that there was about, you know, that was like 10 years later, I hadn't really done much of anything. I really realized how much I missed acting and the and just working in film. And, and so I started working more actively then and people were calling me for roles, sort of, you know, just because of that movie, I think. And I felt like my life sort of mirrored what Anne was going through in the movie, sort of finding herself again and, 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 and reinventing herself. And it just really spoke to me as, as a woman performer and, and as a mom and just as a person in the business that 
I had another opportunity. There was another round for me in, in my career. And I think that's an important story to tell for everyone, man or woman, really, you know, that it's never too late. You can have a second chance if you really want something and you, and you really put your mind to it. Um, so I, I think that message really resonated with me. And also in the film, even though it's about a, a woman's you know, empowerment story and finding herself again and her reawakening, it's also a movie about a marriage mm -hmm. and about how you stay together when something horrible and tragic and there's a crisis happening because normally those things will tear you apart. But Larry Fessenden and myself were long married people and um, I wanted to showcase also that you know you can bring your partner along with you when there's a shift or a change in the dynamic of your relationship. I think that's really interesting what you're saying about like um, the opportunities uh, for you know actresses. And it's true, maybe in the past, it felt, would maybe feel like women would kind of run out of road, whereas men could play leading characters, you know, well into their 50s and beyond even, whereas the women would just stay the same age, just sort of like in their 20s and thinking of like, you know, a lot of horror films as well. So do you think that that is slowly shifting or do you think a lot of it is to do with women taking things into their own hands and finding those opportunities for themselves or setting up production companies and so on and so forth? Yeah, I mean, I think there's been a reawakening in the business and in society, certainly in our country about, you know, and in the UK as well about, you know, women having, you know, positions at the forefront of, of what's happening and making decisions. And it just wasn't the case in, in, especially when I first started in the 80s. In Hollywood, we had a lot of female editors, but we didn't have a lot of and actresses, obviously, but we didn't have a lot of women in positions of power, <clears throat> producing, directing, running studios, and now we do. So that that is all changing. It really is. And that there's so many, you look at television, there's so many television shows with a female character at, at the head. And that just wasn't the case years ago at all. And we all sort of just let it happen until we went, we collectively woke up and said, we're not gonna take this anymore. You know, we want our seat at the table. So it is changing and, and men and women are really accepting it and, and nobody's balking at it anymore. So I think this movie also mirrors what has happened in, in the entertainment field in the last probably 10 years. You know, there's been an explosion of of women in positions of power. And I think it's also maybe realizing that older characters actually can be even more fascinating because there's so many more sort of nuances, you know, to the kinds of relationships they're gonna be in in a different period of your life rather than always having just kind of young, you know, early twenties kind of characters. Um, I was thinking of like Mayor of Easttown, you know, with Kate Winslet for, or something like that, where it's like, you know, kind of the opposite to what you maybe used to see as a leading woman's character in, in a Hollywood film yeah. or something. And yeah, people and love people, it. People love it. But to be fair, I will say that, you know, I worked a lot with Stuart Gordon in my early days and he did give me an amazing role after I worked with him in Reanimator in From Beyond. And that character was the lead of that movie. And I had a big trajectory to play and a lot of different colors to play in, in one film. And that character was very, very strong. But even when that movie came out, it was around the time that Aliens came out and also The Terminator, um, you know, Sigourney Weaver was, was at the top of her game then and also um, Linda Hamilton. But, you know, it wasn't the norm, but there was the, you know, the one-off movie. And, and in horror films, I do think that women have gotten to play a little bit more than in other genres mm -hmm. as well, um, just in a general sense. But now I feel like everything's a little more even. Mm. And so, you know, what do you hope that people will take away? I guess you've touched on lots of things already, but, you know, like you say, it, in some ways you can look at it on the surface level as kind of like an entertaining film. There's quite a few comedic moments uh, in there. 
but then it does have this deeper level and it can be a release for people to sort of see maybe something that they've experienced in their lives kind of acted out in this way in this kind of metaphorical way of the of the vampire mm -hmm. story yeah i think the message of the movie is that it's never too late to be the person you've always wanted to be it's never too late to bring your partner on an amazing journey of self-discovery with you and that you should never give up on your partner or on yourself and you should keep trying to be the best person that you can be and the most self-actualized person you can be. Mm. Was there a particular moment that you enjoyed doing in the film? I'm just thinking of all your amazing costumes and amazing scenes you got to do, but did you have like a real highlight? Yeah, it's funny. Um, I, I, I love all the scenes so much. Um, you know, when you ask me that question, like four or five scenes come into my, my mind. One of the scenes is um, sitting there and smoking a joint with Larry Fessenden at the table, sort of towards the the, the middle third of the, the movie, and um, and I really enjoyed that because that was the first moment that I really feel like our characters just really saw each other for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, but I also love the dancing sequence that I had to do when I was drinking. Mm -hmm blood out of a wine glass that was just really fun <laughs> lifting up the furniture and um and uh the the set designer did a great job with finding furniture that i could lift i actually could lift that with one hand um it was blow up furniture and and um i love this scene in the restaurant when i first transform and i'm in a red dress and you know, my husband is like, what's going on with you? Um, yeah, so I, I think there would probably be the dynamic emotional scenes that I like more than anything, because as an actor, I, I love playing those. Mm -hmm. And can you quickly tell us what you might be doing next after this film? You've got another one lined up, or are you going to wait and see? Well, I have some movies that haven't been released yet that are going to be playing at film festivals or have. I just did a comedy called King Knight with um, Ricky Bates Jr. I play Matthew Gray Googler's mom in that film. And that just premiered at the Fantasia Film Festival. And that's playing at a couple of more festivals, but it hasn't been bought by a distributor yet. So hopefully I think that will be happening really soon. And then um, I have a movie I did with Brandon Christensen called Superhost. And that's premiering at a festival upcoming next month, Popcorn Frights, I think, in Miami. And uh, that's a movie about um, some Airbnb bloggers. They go to different Airbnbs and they rate them. And there's a crazy woman who owns a, an Airbnb and some people get killed in the movie. Um, and it's really wild and fun. Mm -hmm. And then I did my first video game called Back for Blood. It's a big video game for Warner Brothers. And that's coming out October 18th. That was my first time doing that. And um, I think I went in for 12 different sessions over a period of about a year and um, recorded over 800 lines of dialogue. And it was some of the most fun stuff I've ever done in my life, do, doing a voiceover for a character. Oh, that sounds so much fun. There's loads of things you've been so busy. <laughs> well, <done you. laughs> um, well, I'm out of time, but it's been so lovely to chat to you. Thanks so much and, and best of luck with all your future ventures. You too, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Bye.